So mobile manufacturer Xiaomi, you've probably heard of Xiaomi, right? They've got yet another budget smartphone that's just hit Blighty with some pretty solid specs despite a very low asking price of just 159 quid, making it similarly priced to the likes of the Poco M3 smartphones and of course the Moto G30. Definitely great for anyone who's on a budget that's tighter than a gnat's bumhole. It's basically an upgraded version of the old but still pretty damn good Redmi Note 9S and it'll be one for any media lovers out there, boasting an AMOLED screen and a stereo speaker setup, definitely two rare features at this sort of cost. But is it actually any good? Well, I'm really glad you asked because now I'm going to whip the Redmi Note 10S on out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware, the software, the camera tech, test out its gaming chops, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So what do we got in the box besides the lovely Redmi Note 10S? Well, we got one big old chunky adapter, a USB cable with bonus QR code action, and oh yes, despite the low asking price, you do get a condom case to keep your shiny new Redmi Note 10S protected. And that's all the good stuff, so now let's turn our attention to the actual smartphone. And I've got to say, first impressions are pretty good. It's got a nice smart finish to it. Actually reminds me quite a lot of the Poco X3 GT, which I've only just finished reviewing. It is a simple plastic back, and as you'd expect at this sort of budget price point, uh, but quite minimal brand and nothing too extravagant or obscene right there in your face. A quite a tidy looking camera chassis up top as well. And Xiaomi's Redmi Note 10S does feel a little bit lighter and thinner than the older Note 9S. You've got plastic edging as well, but then you do have Gorilla Glass 3 up front, so hopefully that'll help to toughen it up, prevent any scratches. You don't get any pre-installed screen protector though, which is a bit of a shame. This is the Onyx Grey model of the Redmi Note 10S, nothing particularly exciting as you can see there, but you can also grab it in ocean blue and pebble white. Maybe they'll do a slightly better job of masking scuffy, greasy marks as well, because they're showing up pretty bad on this one. It is reassuring though that the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10S is IP53 splash resistant as well. So similar to Motorola's smartphones, it doesn't matter if you spill your pint on it, your G&T, whatever your beverage of choice may be. Touch wood, dry it off quick and it should be all right. So now let's pop that SIM tray and see what delights await within. And it's a big one, ladies and gentlemen. That is quite a satisfying SIM tray because not only do you have space for two SIM cards at the same time, but you've also got a separate micro SD memory card slot for expanding the storage. All right, time to power up this beast and check out the rest of it. So the Redmi Note 10S is all set up and of course, as usual, it's Android 11 with a good bit of Xiaomi's MIUI 12 launcher slathered there on top. And from a quick flick about, it's basically the same MIUI experience as always. I've banged on about it probably about 12 dozen times already. So once again, you do have a fair amount of crapware bundled on here. You've got lots of Xiaomi's own apps bundled on here, like the Mi Browser, Mi Community, Mi Remote, Mi, 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 and some of Facebook's own apps, like, of course, Facebook and Instagram. And the worst part is that the likes of Facebook, you can't actually uninstall either. You usually can on uh, Xiaomi smartphones, but uh, they are stuck on here unless you do a clever bit of jiggery porkery in the background. Thankfully, MIUI in version 12 is about as close as you'll get to stock Android on a MIUI smartphone. So you've got the Google Discover feed, you've got your apps tray by default, thank God. Drag down your notifications bar from anywhere, but you've also got Xiaomi extras like the control center, which is really handy for toggling all your various bits. And you've also got fast access to all of your smart devices that you've got set up in your home as well. So I love some of the extra bonus bits like the game turbo mode, which I'll show off later with a bit of Call of Duty mobile action. And you've got the likes of the video toolbox as well, which is quite handy, uh, allows you to, for instance, enjoy a YouTube video with the screen hibernating so you can, you know, listen to any podcasts on there that you happen to check out, or vodcasts, or whatever the official term is, uh, audiobooks, things like that. Just be aware that with something like the Redmi Note 10S, you're not going to be guaranteed the long-term OS and security updates as you would with something like a Nokia blower, for instance. And that's not to say that a Redmi smartphone will only last you a year or two, I know plenty of people who are still using Xiaomi smartphones are three or four years after launch. But of course, with the lack of the security updates, you might have to be that little bit more careful. So if that's going to be a deal breaker for you, you might want to look elsewhere. On the security side, you do have an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor here on the Redmi Note 10S, and so far, touch wood, despite the fact it's quite a skinny little thing, uh, absolutely no problems. It takes my finger straight away, and you're immediately into your desktops. And you've got a bit of face and lock security to back that up as well, although not the most secure, because it does still recognize me even with a face mask on. And like other AMOLED smartphones, you do have an always-on display feature as well, which is fully customizable. You've got various analog options, a kaleidoscope if you want something a bit more trippy, some digital ones and some that are just proper batch. 
And these are all the nice, but unfortunately they only ever seem to display it for 10 seconds after you hibernate your smartphone, at which point they just bugger right off. And that's actually a, a setting in here, as you can see there, display items for 10 seconds after tapping recommended. There doesn't actually seem to be any way of disabling that, unfortunately, so you are stuck with it. As for that screen, well, it's a 6.43 inch AMOLED panel, as I mentioned before. So nice punchy colors and seems proper bright on those top brightness levels as well. So hopefully touch wood should be absolutely fine for outdoors use, certainly seems to do the job. You do apparently get 360 degree ambient light sensors as well. Do they actually work this time? Probably not. I'm expecting the auto brightness to be as shonky as usual. But anyway, if you're a media fan, gorgeous stuff. Full HD plus resolution, 2400 by 1080 pixels. So you get nice crisp images. It's not the biggest panel in the world, 6.43 inches, but certainly more than comfortable enough for enjoying a movie. Nice wide viewing angles as well. And only a dinky little selfie orifice that pokes its way into proceedings when you go full screen, although it is centrally positioned, which seems all the rage these days. I kind of prefer shunted off into a corner personally. You dive on into those display settings. You've got plenty of features and toggles to play around with, the likes of an anti-flicker mode. You've got a reading mode to make things more comfortable on your peepers late at night. You can play around with the color output as well. So as you can see there, vivid by default, which I personally love. But you can dial things down a bit with a bit of standard action or actually mess around with the color temperature yourself. However, you will notice a lack of refresh rate action in here. That's because it is just a 60 hertz display, no 90 or 120 hertz action. And fair enough, because fast refresh AMOLED screens aren't cheap. So at this sort of price point, I would be surprised to see one. It's also definitely worth pointing out that at the time I shot this video, we don't have any Netflix or Disney Plus support on the Redmi Note 10S. That's sometimes the way when I get the phones uh, early ahead of the actual official release here in Blighty. But that should be rectified hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So despite the lack of silky smooth fast refresh, that display is looking rather bloody special for the price point. And on the audio front, the Redmi Note 10S definitely impresses as well. You've got Bluetooth 5.0 support, but also a actual headphone jack down below. You've got high-res audio support on this thing and also a stereo speaker setup. So let's just check that out, see how good those stereo speakers really are. Born by dousing it in white light and or dropping it in your pint of butt fast. Whoopsies. So yeah, on that top volume level, not exactly going to uh, blow your face off or anything like that. Uh, probably in quite a noisy environment, you'll sort of still struggle to hear what is going on. And of course, that top AP speaker, not quite as powerful as the bottom mounted speaker. But still, again, at this sort of price point, it's great to have that option. Now, performance. And of course, at this sort of price point, you can't expect an absolute powerhouse. What you've got powering this thing is the MediaTek Helio G95. And that is backed by either 6 or 8 gigs of DDR. For RAM. This is the 6 gig model of the Redmi Note 10S. And as you can see there, not bad Geekbench scores. And certainly so far, Touchwood, just from flicking around, playing around with various apps and everything, everything seems to work fairly smoothly. So the Redmi Note 10S should certainly be absolutely fine just for your everyday shenanigans. But let's test out the gaming shops all the same. Just in case you're after something that can do a bit of PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, and all of that good stuff on the side for under 200 quid. So as usual, of course, you've got that game turbo mode. So just swipe, swipe with your finger like so. And you uh, bring up the little toolbar, which gives you access to all kinds of features, including uh, fast access to a whole bunch of apps while you're gaming. Uh, you can also record the action, free up resources if you absolutely need to. Although touch wood, the performance seems absolutely spot on. I had a blast through a couple of quick games on Call of Duty Mobile. And even though I had it on the high detail settings and the high frame rate setting as well, absolutely flawless performance. The gameplay remained buttery smooth the screen was nice and responsive as well so I actually stood a fairly good chance against thankfully what was fairly crap opposition and Xiaomi has packed a 5000 milliamp battery into the Redmi Note 10s as well so it should keep you going all day long especially with that fairly energy efficient MediaTek chipset packed in there and you've got 33 watt fast charging as well so again at this sort of price point pretty damn respectable so let's finish up the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10s unboxing with a squint at the camera tech and what you've got here is a quad lens setup uh, which to be fair is fairly standard at this sort of price point even uh, you've got 64 megapixel primary sensor 8 megapixel ultra wide and then you've got a basic 2 megapixel depth sensor and 2 megapixel macro sensor whoop no surprises really from Xiaomi's camera app. It's basically the same as what you'll find on other Redmi, Poco, etc., etc. smartphones. So fairly easy to get to grips with and customizable too. You open up in full auto mode with a bit of AI action if you want it as well, which you can just recognize a scene and then just have to tweak the settings to make your photo look even more luscious. You will shoot at 16 megapixel resolution by default, despite the fact it's a 64 meg sensor. That's because it uses quad pixel binning. You can swap to the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens 
ends with a quick tap here just for a more pulled back view if you like and there is a uh, two times digital zoom option as well there's obviously no optical zoom here on the Redmi Note 10s and to give you an idea of what this Redmi phone is capable of here's just a few sample shots that I took with it over the course of 24 hours and as you can see obviously quite limited when it comes to strong daylight and also when it comes to low light as well you do have a dedicated night mode this seems to make sort of minimal difference you still get quite grainy fuzzy images so i'd say definitely you want to be keeping it going in good lighting wherever possible essentially don't challenge the redmi note 10s like most other budget smartphones and you should be absolutely fine you've also got uh, various bonus modes like a portrait mode which uses that depth sensor to add a bokeh style background effect while keeping your subject sharp diving into more you've got plenty uh, more options in here including a full 64 meg mode if you do want to shoot at that max resolution and just ditch the quad pixel binning the night mode which i mentioned before and you can edit the modes as well so you can have your favorites up there on the start screen so you're not having to flick to that more section to load them up and if you do want to shoot a two megapixel macro photo which to be fair i wouldn't recommend but there you go you can just dive on in there and do that and you've also got pro controls if you want complete manual control over the likes of the shutter speed the iso levels etc and we dive on into video as well unfortunately the redmi note tennis is rather limited you've got 1080p at 30 or 60 fps but you do at least have a 4k mode at 30 fps and then finally around front you've got a 13 megapixel selfie shooter as well which again fairly basic stuff i wouldn't expect uh, the world from this you do have an hdr mode which is as you can see toggle off by default so let's just stick that on auto and oh yeah ladies and gentlemen it's another world beater so there you have it that in a nutshell is xiaomi's redmi note 10s which as i say is available in blighty for 159 quid and if you're gasping for an amoled display at that sort of sub 200 pound price point well this is going to be one of your very few options it's great to see features like stereo speaker setup you've got the headphone jack you've got the expandable storage performance is fine for absolutely everything including a bit of light gaming on the side and the battery life should be stellar as well so it's just a few little things here and there like you don't get the fast refresh rate on that oled screen of course and the camera will be pretty damn basic but all the same very value packed device so what are you thinking about the xiaomi redmi note 10 also are you tempted uh, definitely be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below please do plug subscribe and do that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest day and have yourselves a fan dabby dozy rest of the bloody week cheers everyone love you